In this lesson, we will study ideal gas by analyzing the random motion of gas molecules. This is called the kinetic theory. Let's start with the molecular model for the pressure of an ideal gas. Consider an ideal gas with n molecules inside a cubic box with each side d. The molecules doing random motion inside the box would collide elastically with each other and with the sides of the box. Now we'll look at one molecule colliding with this face of the box. We know that the impulse on the molecule equals to the average force times time, which equals the change in momentum of the molecule. If you remember, we've done this kind of problem back in the momentum unit. Because the collision is elastic, there's no kinetic energy being lost, so the molecule bounces off at the same speed, and it's symmetric on the two sides, so there is only momentum change in the x direction. There's no momentum change in the y direction. So the change in momentum of the molecule is the change in momentum in the x direction, which is m times delta v's x component. And the change in velocity in the x direction would be the vx final minus the vx initial. Let's see. If we say the x component is just vx, then we can say the final velocity is vx and the initial is negative vx. So the final is vx, the initial is negative vx, the change in velocity's x component would be twice the vx. So the change in momentum of the molecule would equal to m times the delta vx, which is m times 2vx. If I divide by delta t on both sides, I'll be able to get the force, and I'm just going to write f without the subscript average. And this will be m times 2vx divided by delta t. And this will be m times 2v sub x. The delta t would be the time between two collisions. This particle would collide with this wall, goes to the other side, bounces back, and then collide with this wall again. The time it takes for it, the particle to go to the other side and then back would be the distance traveled divided by the speed in this direction. So delta t would be the distance traveled back and forth to d divided by the velocity's x component, vx. I can cancel the 2, and then simplify this. I would get m times vx squared divided by d. And this is the force from one molecule only. And there are n molecules in the box. So that means uh, the total force that's acting on this side of the box is m over d, and then we have vx squared from the first particle, and then from the second particle all the way to the nth particle. Since this is the sum of all the vx squared, I'm going to add them all together and then divide by n to get the average value, which means uh, this is the average of vx squared. That means uh, I will be able to rewrite this equation. This part is n times the average. So I get m over d times n times the average of vx squared. Since the particle is really doing three-dimensional motion, we can say that the speed squared of that particle equals to the velocity's x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. For an object with two components of velocities, the total velocity would be this diagonal, and the magnitude of this total velocity is the speed. So the speed is the square root of uh, vx squared plus vy squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. For three-dimensional motion, the object would also have a z component velocity, which means uh, the total velocity would be slanted like this in a three dimension. And that means the speed is the slanted for this. 
therefore, to find the speed, we'll have to do the Pythagorean theorem one more time. The speed would equal to the square root of uh, this side squared. This, this side squared will be vx squared plus vy squared. And then plus this uh, other side squared, which is the vz squared. So this is the Pythagorean theorem for three dimensions. If I square both sides, I get this. Speed squared equals to these added together. And that also means that if I take average, then I can just take average of each term and I'll get the average of the speed squared. Because the motion of the molecules is completely random, the motion should not favor any of these sides which means uh, the average of vx squared and the average of the vy squared and the average of vz squared, all three of these terms, they should be equal because the motion is completely random. Which means uh, I can say the average speed squared would be three times the average of the vx squared. This means uh, I can replace the average of the vx squared as uh, average speed squared divided by 3. So this would equal to m over d times n times uh, one third the average of the speed squared. So now we have the force on this face of the box from all of the molecules colliding with the face. And we can find the pressure on the box by finding force divided by area. The force is that, so it's m over d times n times one third the average speed squared, divided by the area of this face, which is d squared. I have here divided by d and then divided by d squared. That means divided by d cubed. And what is d cubed? d cubed is the volume of the box. So I can rewrite this as uh, one third times n times uh, m times uh, average v squared divided by the volume of the box. Because we know PV equals to nkt, we can multiply by volume on both sides, so we can get P times V, which is NKT, would equal to this part. And because here I have MV squared, it would be nice if I have one half MV squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 2 here and then divide by 2. So I can have a one half MV squared. So this part, which equals to PV, would equal to 2 thirds n times uh, one-half m times the uh, average v squared. Now I'm going to call this one-half m times average v squared the average kinetic energy. And then I can cancel the n and then divide it by two-thirds on both sides and I will get the average kinetic energy equals to three-halves kT. You may have learned this in your chemistry class, that the temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy of a molecule. Because the three halves is constant, this Boltzmann's constant is also a constant. That means the average kinetic energy of a molecule is proportional to the temperature. We can also write this average kinetic energy as a one half m v squared and this v over here has a special name it's rms the root mean square speed because the root mean square speed squared equals to the average of the speed squared that means the root mean square speed equals to the square root of the average of the speed squared that's why it's called the root mean squared speed because it's the square root of the mean of the speed squared. So it's root mean squared speed. So we just did all this to derive this equation right here. I don't think you'll be tested the derivation on the AP exam, but you do need to know the result and you need to know how to use it. So this is what we derived. The average kinetic energy of one molecule 
is one half m times the root mean square speed squared, which equals to three halves k t, and this k is the Boltzmann's constant. One important thing to know is that one half m v squared is a kind of kinetic energy we call translational kinetic energy. So this is the average translational kinetic energy. If we have a monatomic ideal gas, meaning a single atom in a molecule, for example, helium and neon gas, they have single atom in one molecule, so they are monatomic gas. If you only have one atom in a molecule, they would only move around like this. They would only have translational motion. But if you have something like a diatomic ideal gas, a diatomic gas has two atoms in one molecule. Examples for diatomic gas are oxygen, hydrogen, etc. Because you have two atoms in the gas, that means not only they can move around and have translational kinetic energy, they can also vibrate and give you vibrational kinetic energy or rotate and give you rotational kinetic energy. So they would have translational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, and the vibrational kinetic energy. So it's more complicated. For this course, I think you just need to know the translational kinetic energy, and it's important for you to know that this mass over here is the mass of uh, one single molecule, and this is the average kinetic energy per molecule. And if you remember, we talked about the K. Is for molecule and the R, the gas constant, is for mole, which means、uh, we can write the average translational kinetic energy per mole as、uh, one half m root mean square speed squared, where this m will be the molar mass, and in that case,、uh, this would equal to three halves. Guess what? It's R times T because R is for mole and K goes with the molecule. You should memorize these equations before moving on to the next lessons.